Hi, this is Digital Byte Computing. I'm going to show you how to install the Plex Media Server onto your Mac computer and how to configure it with all your movies and your TV shows that you may have installed. So the first thing you want to do is go and download the Plex Media Server for your computer and the, the theatre as well. So open up a browser and go to Plex. So if we click on that icon, we'll open that up. Now, Plex is used to manage all of your media that's essentially on your computer. So it'll let you, you know, um, download all of your cover art automatically. So all of your movies and your TV shows, all the information, um, the blurbs about what the TV shows are about, the, the covers of your movies, etc. And it's just a much easier way to manage your media collection. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go up to the Downloads tab. Now, there are two things that you want to install. All right, the first thing is the Plex Media Server. So what the Media Server will do is this is essentially what's going to be managing all of your content. All right, so this can run on a uh, any machine, so on a Mac or on a Windows machine. And this is what will manage uh, like for example, if you have an external hard drive, which is what I do, a three terabyte hard drive with my movies and my TV shows, Plex Media Server will manage that. Then on top of that, if you want to be able to run Plex, the actual application to view your movies on this computer, then you'll need to install Plex Home Theater. So the beauty with this is you can have Plex Media Server installed on one computer, right? And then install Plex Home Theater on other computers in your house. So if you've got more than one computer, say you have three or four computers, and you've also got some devices such as an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device, for example, you can install the Plex Home Theater for your computers, for your Windows, for your Mac, and you can also install the Plex software for your uh, your, your tablets, your phones, etc., so that you can actually communicate with Plex Media Server and use all your content from one location. So let's select computer. We want to download the latest version. So let's say download. All right, so that's gonna to start to download it. It's downloading it to my desktop here. So the next part is to download the Plex Home Theater. So remember you need the both. You need both software packages. The Plex server is just managing your content. The Home Theater is what will let you view the content on this computer and on other computers that you will need to ins uh, like run it on. So let's download Plex Home Theater as well. So my computer is 64-bit, so I'll download that. But as you can see, you can also download for Windows or for Linux as well. All right, so let's just download the Mac version, 64-bit. And it's going to download it from here as well. All right, so that install has finished. So let's install the Plex Media Server first and configure it. So let's open that up. Just minimize this. Uh, let's say move to application folder. All right, so that's moved it. Let's go and open it up. All right, so the Plex Media Server, so I don't have to open it, it opens up automatically, uh, is a completely web-based um, management suite. All right, so you just manage it from your browser. In this case, I'll be using it in Safari, but if you have another browser such as Chrome or Firefox, it will run on there as well. All right, so that has now finished doing its initial scan and it's gonna ask you to put in a friendly name. So you can call this uh, movie, server, whatever. But I'm just gonna leave it as my default, which is pulling this name from my computer. So this computer is called Media Server and we'll just leave that as is if you want to send feedback if it breaks. So the next thing is we want to add media to our um, Plex, all right? So what we have to do is we have to add a library. So a library is essentially a list of folders that you will have within your Plex media server um, for breaking up depending on what sort of content you have. 
So movies will be using the movies container. TV shows will use the TV shows container. If you have music and you want to hook it up, say, to your iTunes music, you will use that one. If you have photos, say, your iPhoto library, you will use that one. And if you have home videos or home movies that you've recorded yourself, for example, I would recommend using this one. Now, general rule of thumb, for anything that has to do with movies, uh, with documentaries, uh, concerts, that sort of thing, select the movies container. What this will do is this will actually go onto the internet and source the covers, it's going to source the, the, the movie information and the details of that movie from a repository online. This is a different repository than the TV shows. So you could select TV shows for your, um, let's say a music concert for example, and it may find something, but you're gonna get much better success if you're using movies, uh, for movies, concerts, uh, documentaries, all right? So let's select movies. We'll leave the name as movies because that's what's gonna be in there. Click on next and we want to add a folder. Now you've got your list of your, I guess your hard drive in here, your finder. This is what's listed locally on my computer. I don't have any movies in here because I've run out of space too quickly. So I've put them inside my three terabyte drive and I've got a movies folder there. All right, so I'm gonna select that and click on add. All right, so that has added movies into there. Go to add library. So that has now created a new movies thing. Now what this is gonna do, this is now gonna start scanning the entire hard drive. So it's gonna start scanning my three terabyte movies folder. All right, so that's gonna start searching that automatically, downloading all the information that it needs automatically, which is fantastic. I can then add another library, and we wanna add TV shows. Next, add folder, and again, it's in my three terabyte, and we're going to call and we're going to select TV shows. Add. So that has now added a TV shows container or a library. Now let's say we've got something else. Now I mentioned before that I'd select movies for other content. So let's select movies. Add folder. Now I've got something inside my two terabyte drive, which I know has that option as its best. And let's got doc, we've got documentaries, all right? So something like this, family videos, home movies, etc. Don't use the movies folder, uh, the movies library. Don't use the TV shows library. Use the home, the what is it, home videos or home movies um, one that you had down here, all right? So selecting documentaries and add. Okay, so that is now scanning the internet automatically. Actually, this one we don't want to call it movies, do we? We want to call it documentaries. Okay, and that is scanning my movies, my TV shows, my documentaries automatically, and we'll sort them automatically as well. So let's select next. That will keep doing it in the background. You don't have to worry too much about it. You then got you then got channels that you can use within Plex. So if you want to add one of these channels, you can if you want to. I'll leave that blank for now. Next, and done. And that is it. So now you'll see that that's automatically started discovering some movies that I had on there and let's have a look once it's finished. All right, so that should have finished scanning your entire computer and, and the drives where you've selected your movies and your TV shows. You'll actually see that it's picked up a couple of TV shows, it's picked up some movies as well, etc. Uh, so that is done on the server side. So now the next part is to install the home theater. So let's just close out of this and open up the home theater. All right, so actually what we'll do is let's copy it into the applications and we'll put it into my doc. So let's open it up. Now, this will automatically search for a media server that's on your network, and it should find it automatically. So if all things have worked, 
Uh, let's just say we've got analog built-in speakers and where's my mouse? And we'll go next. All right, and that's it. So that should have picked up your movies, your TV shows. So if I open up movies, that is reading the movies correctly, TV show. So that's the whole lot. Uh, Plex Media Server, and then the Plex um, Home Theater for your computer.